Okay, class, picking up where we left off at. We took this equation here and replaced P of T with 3,000. And that's equal to 4.95 times T minus 57 to the second power plus 1,406. Now we want to solve this by hand. So the first thing we should do is subtract 1,406 on both sides. So this will give us 1,594 is equal to 4.95 times the parentheses t minus 57 squared. We divide each side by 4.95. We will have this equal to, this will be t minus 57 parentheses squared. This would be 1594 over 4.95. I don't want you to divide this yet because I don't want any rounding. So now we would take the square root of both sides. So we will have plus or minus the square root of 1594 all over 4.95. Then, on the other side, we will have t minus 57. Now, we will add 57 on both sides. So, we will have 57. Let me scroll down a little bit. So, we're going to write this out as two answers. We have 57 plus the square root of 1594 all over 4.95 then we will also have its minus counterpart which will be 57 minus the square root of 1594 all over 4.95 then that's all equal to T. So now we will put this in our calculator. So we will have 57 plus, we'll put a parenthesis, then we will do our square root of 1594 divided by 4.95. Close our parentheses and press enter. Now that'll give us, and we can round this to, uh, let's round it to the nearest uh, whole number. So we can make this 75. And then we could take 57 minus parentheses. Then we would do our square root. And we would have 1594 divided by 4.95. That will give us 39. Actually, we should just round this to two decimal places. So let me go back and adjust this here. So we can make this 74.94. We will round this to two decimal places. It will be 39.06. Now, and this, and both of these are what T is equal to. Now remember, T is the time. So that means that we will add these times to, I believe it was 1900. If we go back here, because this was the model for 1900. So this is what we will have to do. It asks what it means as well. So this is what it means. So it means in the years 1939 and 1974, the poverty, the poverty threshold for individuals under the age of 65 was $3,000.
because either one of these values would work. Okay, so now we go here. It says, what is the vertex of the model? What does it mean in this situation? Okay, so now what we would do is this here. We will go back up here. And as discussed in previous sections 9, 1, and 9, 2, we already talked about the vertex. So the vertex here would be this value here, which would be our H, and this value here, which would be our K. Now we always take the opposite sign of our H. So this would be 57. And then our X, this would represent our X, this would be our H, and then our K would be exactly the sign that you see which would be 1,406. So it's 57, 1,406. So let me write that down here. It would be 57, 1,406. And it asks us, what does it mean in this situation? That in 1957, the lowest amount or the poverty level hey class I took the liberty of typing this out so in 1957 the lowest amount for the poverty level of individuals under the age of 65 was 1406 this what this what the vertex means that this will be the lowest point period for the poverty levels. Okay, so now it says here the square roots of negative numbers. When we try to take the square root of a negative number, it is impossible to find a real number that works. For example, the square root of negative 25. When we put in the square root of negative 25, I don't think I have it on the setting that would do this. So we do the square root of negative 25. Press enter, it gives us a non-real answer and gives us an error. But what you would need to do in order to solve this, you could go to mode and then you will go down until you get to where it says real. Hit the right arrow key and then hit enter to A plus B I. Now I press second in mode and now you can do the square root of negative 25. And it will give you 5i. So it says in order to make sense of the square root of a negative number, we introduce a new type of number, the imaginary number, which is signified by this i. It says the square root of negative 1 is equal to i, where i is called the imaginary unit. Imaginary numbers, okay, this is a brief history on it. You can read this at your leisure. But now we're going to go to example 6. We have the square root of a negative 49. Now it's going to give us the same answer as if we would say the square root of 49. The square root of 49 we know is 7. But since we have this negative sign here to be 7i. Now we come here to b. Disregard this negative sign on the outside for right now. We know the square root of 81 is 9. And since it's negative it's 9i. But since we have a negative on the outside here we will bring it down. Now you can put all this in your calculator and it will give you the same answer. As a matter of fact, I'll do this negative square root of 81 of a negative 81. And you notice it gave us a negative 9i. Okay, so now we jump here to this next page. Now first of all, since we don't have uh, perfect squares here, we should always pull the I out first. It was a little easier when I did it with the other problems because we had perfect squares. So we'll pull this I out first. So this would be a negative I square root of 3 over 20. Now, we know that we will break this square root of 3 and square root of 20. Let me go above here to give myself a little bit more room. Okay, I'm going to do it up here. So we add the square root of 3 over the square root of 20 to give us the square root of 3 over. We have a perfect square and 20 of 4. So it would be square root of 4 times the square root of 5. 
So this will give us the square root of 3 over 2 square root of 5. We'll multiply our numerator and denominator by the square root of 5. And this will give us the square root of 15. All over the square root of 5 and square root of 5 is 5 times 2 is 10. So this will give us negative i times the square root of 15 over 10. Now we can leave it in this version here, or you can write it as this here. You can write it as a negative square root of 15 all over 10 for i in the middle here. So either way, this is correct. Okay, now we come here to D. Again, we will pull the I out first. Then we will have the square root of 2 over 54. Now I'm going to go up here. Now, now 2 and 54, neither one of them are perfect squares. But we can simplify this. 2 and 54 both has 2 in common, right? So then this will end up being the square root of 1 over 27. So this will give us the square root of 1 all over the square root of 27. Now we know 27 has a perfect square in it of 9. So this will be the square root of 9 times the square root of 3. So the square root of 1 is just 1. The square root of 9 is 3 times the square root of 3. Now we know we cannot leave the square root of 3 in our denominator. So we will multiply the numerator and denominator by the square root of 3. So this would be 1 over 3 square root 3 times the square root of 3 over the square root of 3. So this will give us the square root of 3 all over. Square root of 3 times square root of 3 we know is 3 times 3 is 9. So our final answer here would be square root of 3 over 9 times i. And that would be the final answer for that problem. Now we come down here. It says imaginary numbers, numbers of the form bi, complex numbers, numbers of the form a plus bi. So basically all this is, is the difference between imaginary number and complex number is that you see that you have an operation of addition or it will be subtraction as well. But it still has the imaginary number contained. It says examples of complex numbers. You could do 5 plus 6i. You could do 6i. You could do 5 minus 6i, and so on. Now, we come down here to what I believe is. It says, simplify the following by hand. Write the results in complex form a plus bi if necessary. Now, we have this here. This will give us 3 plus or minus 3 all over 21 because the square root of 9 is 3. So we'll write this as 3 plus 3 over 21. 3 minus 3 over 21. So this will give us 6 over 21, and this will give us 0 over 21. Now 6 over 21, we can simplify both by dividing it by 3. So that would be 2 sevenths, and 0 over 21 is just 0. So this is the final answer for A. Now we come here to B. This will give us 3 plus or minus. The square root of negative 9, we know is 3i all over 24. Now 3 and 3i both has 3 in common, so we can factor out a 3. That would give us 1 plus or minus i all over 24. Now one thing I want to tell you about i is this. When you don't see a number in front of i, it's assumed that 1 is multiplied by i. So 3 and 24 both has 3 in common. 3 goes into 3 once. 3 goes into 24 8 times. So we have 1 plus or minus i all over 8. And that would be the final answer for b. Now we go here to c. Now we will have negative 4. Negative 4 plus or minus Square root of 40, we have the highest perfect square of 40 is 4. So it would be square root of 4 times the square root of 10. Now, we know the square root of 4 will end up giving us 2. But all this is over 2. So we got negative 4 plus or minus 2 square root 10 all over 2. Now, we can factor out a 2 here in our numerator. 